For Criminal Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Madiba. Joining me today is Professor Raymond Sadna, here to talk about moving beyond disillusionment means recreating our political life. Welcome, Raymond. Thank you very much. You argue repeatedly for new alliance of forces and place weight on involvement of business, especially big business. Is this realistic and desirable, given the antagonism that many workers feel for the capitalist class and the vast difference in wealth? Well, it's not something I would have said 20 years ago, but at the moment, you have a situation where business has shown whatever the economic disparities between the very wealthy and the very poor, business has got an interest in legality, in constitutionalism, in nonviolence, in ending corruption. The poor have also got an interest in exactly the same things. The difference between the rich and the poor, I'm not saying the poor mustn't be part of this, but the difference between the rich and the poor is that big business has got power. Business, Big business is needed by the economy, by the government, by the state, and for to keep the economy going. And certain conditions are necessary for business to function well. One of these is regularity. And they need to see an end to this irregularity with breaking the constitution, with breaking the law, with corruption, with violence, with procurement uh, irregularities and so forth. So that it's not something that uh, people who have a visceral antagonism to capitalism, let me say, I'm not a capitalist. I'm not uh, in favor of, I would prefer socialism, but the point is, One has to be practical. I don't know a lot of business people, but I do believe one should reach out to business as part of a coalition of forces, all of whom will have to compromise. Because if business is going to be in a coalition with a range of forces, professionals, caregivers, uh, benevolent organizations like Gift of the Givers, as well as the poor and unionists, there's going to be, have to be compromising if they're going to work together. You can't say to everyone, if you're on the left, you must all believe in the Communist Manifesto. That's the entry point. Equally, business can't say you must all agree that wages must be cut. So there's going to have to be give and take, but I believe it's necessary for stability and the future of the country. And you speak of the ANC of today as dying, but say the ANC in the 1980s was able to guide the popular movement. So can you please give us examples of those? Yes. You know, it's very um, fashionable to say that the people inside the country freed the country, and then those people from Lusaka came in and they took all the positions. Now, this is a binary and and so-called opposite which is not accurate. In fact, there were not a lot of differences between the inside and the outside. We all read from the same hymn book, but what was very important to us is that insight, is that we were doing making the country ungovernable and the people from Lusaka would broadcast from Radio Freedom and make very important suggestions. They understood before we did that ungovernability cannot be a permanent state of affairs. You have to have stability. And they suggested build elementary organs of popular power. They understood that the country was ready for that. And we benefited from that advice, which was generally spot on. But they couldn't say exactly how we must do it. So that the way popular power was implemented, say, in uh, Atridgeville, would not be the same as in Kwamashu, although there was not a lot of popular power in KZN, but in, let's say, parts of the Northern Cape and uh, in Northwest, places that are like that, people would use their own initiative to decide what to do, whether they had forms of popular justice or 
recreational facilities, alternative schooling, things like that. So I think it's very important not to underestimate the contribution that the people outside made to guide the UDF and people inside, other people inside. And lastly, Raymond, the, the thrust of the new politics that you advocate is to move beyond electoral politics. So how do you see this working and how will they act as one force? Well, I'm not saying people must stop voting and that electoral politics must just disappear. I'm just saying we need to augment it. We need something beyond it. And what I have in mind is initially you create this new force which can exert an influence on the state and political parties, so to speak, breathing down their necks so that they are kept on course by the power of the this coalition of forces which come from the broad masses as well as professionals and business. So that this coalition of forces will be at first an influence, but it may become a political party or some combination that will fight elections. I don't know. I don't like forecasting, but what I do think is we need to think of a direction which will involve people. A lot of people who are who were ANC stayed away or didn't register or didn't vote for the ANC. They're looking for something, and maybe we can find some such combination that will meet their needs. That was Professor Raymond Satna speaking to Prima Media's polity about moving beyond disillusionment means recreating our political life.